Across the Elder Scrolls series, a common theme occurs that includes the player finding themselves as a prisoner at the beginning of each game. In Morrowind, the player arrives in the province by boat in order to receive a pardon. In Skyrim, the player finds themselves being mistakenly taken as a prisoner of war amongst the political conflicts. In the Elder Scrolls Online, the player has been made prisoner and enslaved in the Daedric realm of Cold Harbor. Then, finally, in Oblivion, the player finds themselves in the Imperial City Prison. By chance, the cell that has a hidden escape route out of the city happens to be the one you're currently occupying. The Emperor and small group of blades allow you to follow them through the hidden passageways and tunnels for a short time. Then, the player is left to fend for themselves for a small while, and then ultimately, you end up meeting again with the Emperor and his service. This is where Uriel Septon VII is slain by the Mythic Dawn, and the Amulet of Kings is entrusted to you for safe delivery thus beginning the game's main questline. We know in entries like Skyrim that the Dragonborn was wrongfully taken and sent for execution by the Imperial Legion due to you being in the wrong place at the wrong time. However, in Oblivion, it's never exactly stated how and why the future hero of Kavach ended up in the Imperial Prison. Today's video will be about discussing possible theories and reasons as to why your character had ended up imprisoned in the first place in the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. As a disclaimer, there will be quite a lot of theoretical thinking and hypothesizing throughout this video. So, take everything with a grain of salt, have some fun with it, and let me know your opinions on the matter down below. When starting a new game, Oblivion's epic and aesthetic intro cutscene plays with Emperor Uriel Septon VII providing small details about the lead up to the very beginning of the gameplay. He mentions that through his dreams, he has seen Mehrun's Dagon's realm of oblivion, and he knows that an invasion from the Daedric Lord is imminent. He states the date, which is the 27th of Last Seed, the year of Akatosh 433. Then finally he declares that the Third Era is coming to an end, and that these are the final hours of his life. Really, all we need to take away from this is that the Emperor is capable of seeing visions and events that haven't come to pass yet. The actual gameplay itself begins with the player creating their personalized character. This shouldn't have an effect on why your character is in jail, regardless of the race, gender, or aesthetics. The first potential in-game clue that the player encounters with regards to their imprisonment comes from the bitter and rude Dark Elf occupying the cell across from you, Valen Dreth. In every instance of a new playthrough, the first NPC that will talk to you is Valen Dreth, and he never has anything good or nice to say to the player. However, it's in this dialogue that we can start to form an idea of how long the player might have been in jail. All instances of his dialogue include bits of stereotypes and general background knowledge of each playable race, followed by some repulsive statements, and then ending with him saying we're going to die in prison. While we probably shouldn't take much of what he says at face value, there are some snippets of information he says to the player that can be useful for answering our question. When playing as a High Elf or a Dark Elf, Dreth mentions that he will be released before the player, meaning that he was likely imprisoned before us and that he saw us getting placed in the cell to begin with. Worth mentioning is upon choosing a Khajiit or Red Guard, he begins his slander by telling the player to wake up. It's plausible to assume that these are likely first impressions and this could be the player's very first day and potentially first conscious moment inside of the prison. Let's make some observations about the cell and what the character is wearing. Looking around the jail cell, there really isn't much that helps us discover information about our sentence. There is a decomposed skeleton laying in the corner which does tie in with the idea that this specific cell isn't used very often, hence why Captain Renault of the Blades asks what a prisoner is doing in there. Beyond this, there really isn't much else in the cell we can use for our theory building. But let's move on to the player's appearance. The character is wearing a sackcloth shirt and sackcloth pants along with wrist irons. Comparing Dreth's outfit with yours, they are practically identical. That, mixed with the shackles your character has equipped, leads me to believe that you have at least been properly seen and processed for incarceration by the guards. This would highly discount the idea that the hero of Kavach was magically placed or teleported inside the cell. There was more than likely a form of arrest due process, and decision to put the player in jail. Let's move on to some of the dialogue that the player will hear throughout the tutorial while escaping the sewers. The pieces of information I want to discuss come from Boris, the Red Guard member of the Blades, leading the Emperor to safety. 
Not much particulars are shed from his conversations, but there are some key details that might help us to infer some things. Starting with the weakest point, upon the Emperor's death and the passing of the Amulet of Kings, Boris mentions that although he isn't sure why we were entrusted with the relic, the Septims were always able to see more than lesser men. To me, I think that this statement is related to the so-called criminal history and imprisonment that precedes your character, as by lesser men, he is certainly judging our character based on our unlawful actions, especially since he later reiterates he isn't sure why he's sending the Amulet of Kings off with a prisoner. But this won't tell us too much in terms of specifics for our alleged crime, only that whatever it is, it would make the bodyguards of the highest honor look down on us in disgust. However, the most important and strongest idea to cite from Boris is he says to us that the Emperor saw something in the character that no one else could see. The Emperor is able to see more than crimes and selfishness, he's able to sense fates and a total sense of character in what are otherwise complete strangers. This is likely due to the so-called dragon blood that runs through their veins. In other words, this ability is seemingly magical and divine in nature, meaning that perhaps a little bit of destiny was involved with you being placed in prison. Boris later mentions that since the Emperor trusted us, he himself trusts us too. Why does the Emperor vouch so much for this unnamed, irrelevant prisoner? Well, I think the answer to this question is more than enough to answer why the player is in jail in the first place. For this, we'll now turn to the dialogue from Emperor Uriel Septon VII. When receiving your birth sign, it begins with the Emperor loosely explaining to the player what the Nine Divines are. They are essentially a pantheon of gods that the people of Cyrodiil and other parts of Tamriel worship. They also play a major role in guiding people's fates. After a birth sign is assigned, the player asks if Uriel can see their fate, to which he responds with, not your death and how it all ends for you, but the triumphs and tribulations that you will go through in order to help the world of Nern. Essentially, by looking for signs and ways to communicate with the Nine, he is able to determine the scale of one's actions that will be done across their lifetime. It seems like the Hero of Kavach and the Septim family fates are intertwined in more than one way. First, our destinies are matched with Uriel, then we become intertwined with Martin. This is further corroborated when we look back to our first meeting with the Emperor and he mentions that he has seen us in his dreams. The presence of your character alone is a sign to the Emperor that this is the day he dies and that Martin Septim is to be found and undergo his obligatory duties to rule as the new Emperor. The takeaway from all of this for me is that divine intervention seems to be playing a very big part in the game's entire setup. This leads the discussion to the most crucial points when it comes to answering the question of why the character is in jail and what crime was committed. Now that we have theorized and ruled out potential reasonings as well as zoned in on some specific ones, let's look at what Uriel Septim VII says to the player during one of the first dialogue prompts. He says that perhaps the gods have placed the player in this jail cell so that the two of you may meet. And as for the crime we've allegedly committed, it doesn't matter and it's not what we'll be remembered for. I believe at this point, it's almost undeniable that through the Nine Divines, the player ended up in prison at that exact moment in time. But the most important part of the discussion and the point that drives it all home is the conversation prompt that led to Uriel's previously stated response. And it is the player simply asking, why am I here? Not even our own character knows what they've been sentenced for, and at this point, I think I've heard enough to come to a few potential loose conclusions for the theory of why and how the player ended up in the Imperial City Prison. Through the Nine Divines and their guidance in the fates and destinies of the peoples of Cyrodiil, they certainly had a large hand to play in the events of you ending up in jail. To preface for this first theory, I'm not a fan of it for multiple reasons and believe the second one is a lot more plausible. But this one needs to be gotten out of the way. It is the most convenient yet least likely conclusion and involves an extreme, incomprehensible power from the gods. The power would have allowed them to essentially teleport slash place you in that specific prison cell on that specific day and time in order to intercept the emperor and to become intertwined in his destiny. Taking it a step further is that through this incomprehensible godlike power, your character was simply willed into existence right then and there, 
practically as if the perfect hero of the Third Era was created in order to complete destinies and prophecies to save the province. This is why your character has some form of memory loss and doesn't remember basic things about themselves, why they are unsure of the reason for their imprisonment, why no one seems to remember or notice that you were placed in jail, or what crime you even committed to get put in there in the first place. In a meta-like fourth wall approach, this could be thought of like the character creation is the work and design of the nine divine gods and we are simply acting it out by designing who we want to play as. However, I really don't like this theory because it's all too convenient and is contrary to a bunch of previous conclusions that were made earlier in this video, such as the player's clothing, wrist shackles, and dialogue with Vale and Dreth just point to a whole other reason for all of this. Also, towards the end of our conversations with Boris, we end up creating a class which implies that these are skills and abilities we would likely have picked up in our former years of just experiencing life. While certainly an interesting approach, I don't think this theory is the best possible explanation for why we ended up in prison in the first place. However, the second theory, and the one I lean more towards, still involves divine intervention from the Nine, but goes hand in hand with the philosophical idea of predeterminism. A short definition is that this idea states that the actions of everyone and everything have already been decided for the past, present, and future, with free will being sort of an illusion, essentially implying everyone is guided by destiny. The theory starts with the player being an outsider to Cyrodiil. It's clear from the dialogue with every other citizen, as well as guards in the province, that no one has a clue of who you are when first talking to them. No one recognizes you or treats you in a familiar manner. The most plausible explanation for this is that you're a foreigner from another province. This might also explain why there is a dialogue option that involves the player asking Uriel Septim VII, the Emperor of Cyrodiil, who he is. More than likely, any citizen who falls under the Empire's reign would know who the leader of said kingdom is. It is entirely possible that the player had never actually seen what he looked like before, and that is why the question was asked. However, I still stand with the idea that the hero is not originally from this province. Your character was likely embarking on a brief visit to the capital of Cyrodiil, the Imperial City, hence why we end up in that specific jailhouse. Perhaps on the road or within the city walls, Fate and the Nine Divines had it made out that the player would be wrongfully detained and made prisoner. This was in order to intercept Uriel Septim during his final moments and let his destiny pass on to you. In other words, I don't believe the hero of Kavach committed any crime. This is why no one can give you the specifics as to what crime you would have committed and the player is even left asking the Emperor what they're in prison for. Fate had it predetermined that on that day, you would be wrongfully arrested and placed in the path of the Emperor in the only way that would have been possible, the escape route from your jail cell. What the false accusation or assumption of your crime is truly does not matter, but what does is that I don't think a crime was committed at all by our character. I think it's more along the lines of Skyrim's beginning, where it was the wrong place and wrong time in the physical world, yet perfect for destiny and how one's fate is supposed to play out in the grand scheme of time. Similar to how the wrongful imprisonment leads to Alduin attacking the Dragonborn, which ultimately sets up the entwined fortune between the two of you, Oblivion enacts the exact same scenario by having the hero unjustifiably put in jail and yet ends up directly in the path of where the gods need you to be, interacting with Emperor Uriel Septim VII. This theory would further go along with the idea that there was a due process, the player's goods were confiscated, and the prison outfit was put on as well as the iron shackles. Given Valendreth's comments and lack of wrist irons, the hero of Kavach must have been freshly put in prison under wrongful detainment, and not long after, Uriel Septim and the Blades needed access and passageway through your cell, kicking off the events of Oblivion. Overall, these were just some fun theories and ideas to discuss, as little is known about the player's background and history. What makes this game as good as it is, is that you get to fill in the blanks of your character and a lot is left to interpretation. Bethesda likely didn't discuss the nature of the hero's crimes at all because those details truly weren't important to the world building and character immersion. As Uriel Septim said to us before his passing, it's not the crimes that we'll be remembered for, it's the way in which we served all of Tamriel.